Hello, this is Dee McDonald from Tech Skills. In this video series, I will describe and demonstrate some of the power options available in Windows XP. Let's get started. To be able to support power management features, the hardware and operating system need to be able to control aspects of power management. The motherboard, BIOS, and operating system need to support either Advanced Power Management, APM, or Advanced Configuration and Power Interface, ACPI. This computer has an ACPI supported motherboard and BIOS. To verify that Windows has an ACPI compliant HAL driver, I can open up the device manager. The device manager is located in the computer management management console. Click on device manager. And then to verify which HAL driver is installed, I click the plus next to computer and it shows here that ACPI Uniprocessor PC is the HAL driver that we're using. So this computer supports ACPI and I can configure some power management features. Since this computer supports ACPI, I can configure Windows power management features. I configure these features through the Power Options Control Panel applet. There are two main ways to open this applet. The first is through the Control Panel. The power Options are under the Performance and Maintenance link. Click on the Power Options and then with this screen I can control or configure power management options. Second way to open up that same screen is from the desktop. I right click the desktop, click properties, and then from the screensaver tab there's a power button. So both of these open up the same power options properties screen. In Windows XP you can configure some power options called power schemes. Power schemes are a series of save settings that will adjust how long Windows will sit idle before it turns off the monitor, turns off the hard disks, puts the computer into standby, or hibernates the computer. There are some built-in power schemes. Each of these power schemes changes the amount of time it will sit idle. So as I scroll through these, you can see that each power scheme has a different time that will sit idle before it will turn off one of the devices or put the computer in a special power saving mode. The max battery power scheme will turn off the monitor after 15 minutes. It won't ever turn off the hard disk. It will enter system standby after 20 minutes and it will hibernate the computer after 45. So this option will s generally save battery life by putting the computer into a low power state after only about 45 minutes. You can either use the built-in power schemes or you can change a specific power scheme to suit your needs and then you can save these as whatever po custom power scheme that you want so then you can pull up your own custom power scheme at any time so if you don't find one of the built-in power schemes suits your needs you can create your own and save it and always pull up that power scheme at any time here's the power schemes tab from a portable computer on portable computers you can set different power schemes based on whether the computer is plugged in or it's running on batteries Power scheme settings on portable computers are crucial to ensure long battery life and to ensure that your data is saved before the battery runs out. Similar to the power schemes that you saw before, this one has some built-in power schemes and it changes based on whether the computer is plugged in or it's running on batteries. Under the Power Buttons section of the Advanced tab, I can configure how Windows will respond to various actions. For instance, when I close the lid of my portable computer, in this case, the computer will do nothing. I can set it to go into standby or hibernate. Those are two other options. Most computers will allow you to set what happens when you press the power button or possibly the sleep button, and many portable or laptop computers will allow you to configure what happens when you close the lid of that machine. On the Hibernate tab, I can enable or disable hibernation. When a computer hibernates, Windows saves all data that's currently in memory. It saves it to a hiberfill.sys file. Then it completely shuts the machine down. When the computer is restarted, it takes all the data that was in the hiberfill.sys file and it puts it back into resident memory. This process returns the computer to the exact state it was in before hibernating. This means that if I have open applications or programs running, it will save all the information currently resident in RAM to the hard drive in the hiberfill.sys file and then it will turn the machine off. To be able to use the hibernate feature it uses part of the hard drive so however much physical RAM we have we have to have at least that much hard drive space to be able to create the hiberfill.sys file. So in this case we have 1.5 gigs of RAM 
if we go to the C drive, in the root of the C drive we have our hyperfill.sys file. This file is also a 1.5 gigabytes. Portable computers that run on battery might also have an alarms tab. This allows you to set a low battery alarm and also a critical battery alarm. So Windows will prompt you or tell you at a certain percentage. In this case, when 10% of the battery is left, it will give us a low battery alarm. When 5% of the battery is left, it will give us the critical battery alarm. And then it will put the computer into standby mode. We can use the alarm action to allow us to either prompt us or it will put the computer in standby or possibly hibernate mode. Portable computers might also have a power meter tab. This will show how percentage of time that the battery is left down in the icon here in the system tray. Here I have a Windows XP machine running in Microsoft Virtual PC. I've opened up Notepad, typed the word Hibernate, so you can see that I do have an application running. I'm going to put this machine into Hibernate. It's going to save everything that's resident in RAM, including the Notepad program, and then turn the machine off. Then I'll boot up the virtual machine again. You'll watch it resume from hibernation and it will put everything back the way that it was. So the notepad program will be open, the word hibernate will be typed in there, and it will be just as we left it. So I'll manually hibernate. Watch as it goes into hibernation. It will take everything that's resident in RAM, close the machine down, and save all that information to the hyperfill.sys file. So Windows is hibernating at this point. And the virtual machine was shut down. I'll start the virtual machine again. As it boots up, you'll watch Windows will say resuming. So here it's taking everything that's in the hyperfill.sys file, putting it back into memory. And I did have the option enabled to prompt us for a password. So as a security feature, after this resumes from hibernation, I will have to input a password. So enter my password. And then it logs into the desktop and you can see Notepad is still open, the word Hibernate is still there. Unlike the Hibernate feature, the standby feature does not save any data that's currently in RAM to the hard drive. It also doesn't require any free hard drive space to be able to enable it. When a computer goes into standby, all it does is it puts the computer in a low power consumption mode, but it keeps applying power to refresh any data that's in RAM. Standby mode cuts the power to the monitor, possibly the network card and hard drives, but it always supplies power to whatever is in RAM. To bring a computer out of standby, you simply shake the mouse, press the keyboard key, or you might have to press the soft power button to turn the computer back on. Then Windows will take the computer from a low power state, turn back on the monitor, enable the network card, turn on the hard drives, and it's generally an almost instant process. So within four or five seconds the machine is back the way that it was. Although one big problem with the standby feature is nothing is saved that's in RAM. So if your computer is in standby and you lose power, somebody kicks out the power cord, the battery on the laptop runs out, then anything that was resident in memory, including let's say this notepad program, all the data that wasn't saved would be lost. So the machine would shut down, anything resident in RAM would be lost, and then you'd have to start all over. So it's generally recommended if you're using the standby feature that you plug the machine into a uninterruptible power supply or some sort of battery backup device so then the computer doesn't just shut off in the event of a power outage. In this video series I described and demonstrated some of the power management features of Windows XP. Since power management features are hardware and operating system dependent, your computer may not have all the same power management features that I demonstrated. However, this overview should give you a good idea of some of the main power management features that you can configure on your computer. Good luck practicing and thanks for watching.